Welcome to In the Envelope, a podcast from Backstage, the number one resource for actors and talent seekers. I am your host, Jack Smart, awards editor at Backstage, and I'm here to guide you through every aspect of the entertainment industry with the help of some of your favorite stars. These intimate, inspirational conversations with today's most award-worthy film, television, and theater artists provide you, dear listener, advice on how to live the creative life, personal stories of success and failure alike, and maybe, just maybe, a tantalizing glimpse in the envelope. Three, two, one. That was pretty in sync. That was pretty good. Yeah, perfect. Okay. Um, Hi, listeners. Welcome to another episode of In the Envelope. Um, Longtime listeners know him. Maybe recent, uh, those tuning into more recent episodes don't. Jamie Muffet, would you like to introduce yourself to In the Envelope listeners? Yes, I'd love to. (laughs) Hello. Um, (laughs) My name's Jamie. I'm the producer of the podcast and... We, we started this project together all those years ago. Years and, now. Um, yeah, it's been a quite a while. And um, I do all the production and the recording and do a bit of scheduling and mixing, mastering, the whole, all the nerdy stuff, basically. All the stuff that is far beyond me. This is funny because I really hear your voice all the time and it's weird to think that listeners don't. Um, oh, so sad for listeners not to uh, hear me all the time. <laughs> your dulcet tones, absolutely. <laughs> um, well, the, the other thing is, and um, listeners of the, of our voiceover focused episodes have definitely heard your voice. And mm. you are, in addition to being a team member on this podcast, there's another reason I brought you here today. Listeners, today we're talking all things SAG after Foundation, and Jamie is sort of uh, the team's resident SAG after member, right? Yes, this is true. How long have you um, been in the SAG after Guild? I joined in 2015. Um, so yeah, six years ago, and mm-hmm. I'm a voice actor. So that's how I got into SAG-AFTRA and why I'm in SAG-AFTRA. And mm-hmm. yeah, I got in because I did a commercial that made me a must join. And you've been working yeah. consistent, very consistently ever since. Yes. Yeah. I do a fair amount of commercial stuff, fair amount of video game work as well. Mm. More of that, more of that recently. Oh yeah. And, um, oh, you're famous. Oh yeah. And a lot of not quite so high profile stuff that's that pays the bills, but mm-hmm. you know, not quite as exciting, you know, training and corporate work and stuff like that. So a, a, a little bit of everything. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Do do whatever pays the bills. Yeah. So so that's the thing. Like you are you're the perfect person to kind of set up today's episode, which is on all things SAG after foundation. Jamie, I'm putting you on the spot. What did you prior to this interview, what did you know about the SAG after foundation versus the union? <laughs> Well, being completely <laughs> honest, <laughs> go for it. Uh, not a huge amount, I'll this be honest. This is why we're doing this. Yeah, I think this is valuable information for folks and me. Um, yeah. Yeah, I am based just outside of Philadelphia, so I'm not anymore in a major hub. I used to live in New York. I don't mm-hmm. live in New York anymore. And in some respects, I'm out on a little bit of a limb. I'm not even in Philly itself. So, I don't really go to any of the classes and the workshops and the events and things like that. But this is where it gets exciting. Mm -hmm. A lot of these events are now going online. So I actually will have access to these alongside everyone else that isn't in these major hub locations. So that's that's actually a very exciting sort of turn of events. Yeah, it is one of the takeaways from this interview and, and just from this kind of year in general, this year of, of COVID-19 and the, the stress and the chaos of this year has yielded some benefits and some some takeaways that I, I think the industry is going to continue to adopt going forward as things change. I mean, the reason we did this interview also is just to check in on the state of the industry, to hear from two members of the sag After Foundation's board, Jason George and Sharon Lawrence, who are both working actors, and they really speak to Everything that the foundation offers, I'm talking about uh, Storyline Online, emergency assistance programs, catastrophic health fund, there are scholarships for families. And then, of course, there's the casting access workshops, conversations, the business panels. This interview fills listeners in on everything. And I think your point about not knowing the basics about the foundation is perfectly valid. I don't want to like throw him under the bus, 
But sag after Foundation president, Courtney B. Vance, the Emmy-winning actor, Courtney B. Vance, he has also said that before he came on board sag after Foundation, he didn't know a lot about it. And he didn't know that it was such a great resource for working actors. So you're not alone. Yeah. Yeah, I believe it. Um, the only thing that I knew from a voiceover perspective were mm. the two studios on the east and west coast. Yes. Um, in oh my New York gosh. and LA. Yeah. And that, those are very cool. And I certainly heard about the great work that they do there but but yeah all these other programs and you know funds and things that are available to actors yep yeah i wasn't hugely aware of there's a covid relief fund too of course set up in the land that's donated millions and millions of dollars to struggling working actors yeah this is our this is this is great stuff actually can i read from their website because this is so in keeping with us at backstage and with us on this podcast yeah. Um, the foundation understands that artists live in a rapidly changing world, and it's imperative that our actors, voiceover artists, broadcasters, dancers, and other artists understand the evolving industry landscape, are provided with the tools necessary to navigate these changes successfully, and are given the opportunity to hone their craft as they continue through their careers. That is just like, we share so much of the same mission, so much of the same audience. Yeah. I think they call it synergy in the this is business synergy. world. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes, and um, also we are airing this now, listeners, because the SAG Awards are this weekend. Jamie, are you excited? I am. Yes, I voted. Who did you vote for? I'm just kidding. You can tell me after we stop recording. <laughs> yes, yes. You know, I'm, I'm very excited. Now. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be good. I'm looking forward me to it. Too. And it sounds it sounds like an interesting, intimate event oh, in yeah. a way that we probably are not familiar with. Oh so yeah, that's that's it's a be very fun. strange year for awards, including the SAG Awards. But yeah, let's take a quick break and then introduce Jason and Sharon. There are definitely uh, TV watchers and film watchers who know them. Thank you, Jamie, for helping me introduce this deep dive episode. Well, my pleasure. Thank you for letting me out of the booth (laughs) and getting on the podcast. (laughs) I literally hear your voice all the time, and it's weird that listeners don't. Would you like to mention this podcast's sister podcast Uh, while we're at it? Oh, yes. Yes, yes, thank you. Um, If you are interested in voiceover, I have a voiceover-specific podcast called VO School, and we take listeners through every step of the process um, for starting a voiceover career, everything you need to know pretty much. And each episode is sequential, so starting at the beginning, the broad strokes of this industry, and then we get more specific and more niche, and then it's fun. It's it's a good it's a good show, and I have been pretty rubbish about putting out episodes recently, but sure. I'm going to be better at that. Right, 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 right. Okay, let's take a quick break and then introduce ourselves to Jason and Sharon, and then get to it. The nominees are in, and this Sunday you're invited to Hollywood's biggest house party. Your favorite stars toast an unforgettable evening as they honor the year's best performances. With Jason Bateman, Nicole Kidman, Kerry Washington, Kaylee Cuoco, David Diggs, and more at the SAG Awards, Sunday, April 4th, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific on TNT and TBS. The SAG After Foundation is the 501c nonprofit associated with the Screen Actors Guild and American Federation of Television and Radio Artists, dedicated to providing resources, programming, and aid to union members. Joining us today are two of the Foundation's board members. Second Vice President Sharon Lawrence is a SAG Award winner and four time Emmy nominee for NYPD Blue and Grey's Anatomy, and can be seen on The Ranch, Shameless, Dynasty, and more. Jason George, who plays Dr. Ben Warren on Grey's Anatomy and Station 19, also chairs the Foundation's Diversity Advisory Committee. Without further ado, here are Jason George and Sharon Lawrence. I am so pleased to have you both on the podcast today. Hi, Sharon and Jason. How are you? I'm well. It's nice to join you, Jack. And of course, my dear friend, Jason. Much love, Sharon. Uh, It's good to meet you, Jack. Good to meet you. Yeah. um, I would love to have you both kind of introduce yourselves. This is obviously sort of a first for the podcast, but long overdue, I feel, because we, I just can't wait to get into it with all things SAG After Foundation. Um, There's such an overlap between what you guys do and what Backstage does, and we we love partnering with you guys. But um, first and foremost, you are both working actors. 
So I would love to hear like, what is your, what is your background? You know, why are you, can I ask the big question? Like why acting? <laughs> <laughs> You're going deep, just right off the going bat. Going deep right <laughs> off the bat. Yeah. Like why is this? I, who, who, what am I? What am exactly. I? Yeah. Um, yeah, I, my name is Jason George. Uh, I am an actor. It's, uh, unfortunately the, I have no usable skills. Uh, so <laughs> it's the only thing I have done in my adult life. I, uh, I was, uh, headed for law school, uh, when I went into college and, oh. uh, took an acting class. Uh, and I had a, you know, a mentor who was a Supreme court justice in Virginia, justice Leroy Hassell. He was the youngest and uh, only the, like the second black Supreme Court justice of Virginia in history at that time. Mm. And uh, I took an acting class and it was a wrap. And I had to call the judge one day and say, yeah, so I'm calling an audible. We're going to go left uh, <laughs> when we yeah. thought right. And, um, and really it was in why acting it's because when I walk in somebody else's shoes, I learn things about myself. Uh, yes. It's the most, uh, it's as simple as empathy. Uh, I grow every time I play another character. And it's what every kid does instinctively is make believe, you know? And so, and so the ability to bring out that most childlike person, you know, within mm -hmm. me um, to, you know, I'm a, I'm a, you know, I'm a black man from the South in a military town and reconnect with emotions that had gotten locked down for most of my growing up, were told not to be out. Sure. Uh, you know, all those things were, uh, I learned about myself and I grew and I continue to grow and I get to be a kid for a living. And, uh, and then it gives me an opportunity to actually say something about the world that usually is something that's beneficial. Uh, the older I get, the more I'm like, is there something here that I think is, am I behind what this is about? Uh, can I stand behind what this is about? Can I hold my head up high and say, you know, and I, I'm blessed right now to be on a show, Station 19, that, uh, you know, in Grey's Anatomy, that they will pointedly you know, use their powers for good. They will have the conversation. And, you know, when we're talking about race and that uncomfortable conversation, I've seen it happen on camera and behind the camera where we make that conversation happen. So that opportunity to do good and do well, you know, mm. you know, do well for yourself and do good in the world, it's possible to do both at the same time. And so, and that's part of what led me to working with the foundation was, you know, let's do some good in the world. Awesome. Yeah. Oh my God. Everything spot on. This is the, this is the nerdy actorly uh, inspirational stuff that we love on this podcast. Um, Sharon, do you want to introduce yourself? Uh, I'm Sharon Lawrence and I'm a huge Jason George fan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what he just talked about um, is something that, that I evolved to later because I, I, I just want to recognize that he he has put words because he is really good with words to what uh, many people probably aspire to. And, and some of the things that he said, uh, of course, ring true for me. I get to learn about myself through playing other people and I um, get to travel and I know that my uh, world and reality has expanded because I'm an actor. But this business deals with how we communicate. And I, I was born talking. I was born mm -hmm. uh, this way. I really, I was. <laughs> and and, and I, it's because I come from a, a long line of people that like to tell stories. Mm -hmm. And frankly, I was a performer before I was an actor, and there's a difference. Um, I still am both, but I'm grateful that as an actor, I am asked to 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 dig deep, and that and and the maturing process that Jason talked about um, gives me more uh, more bandwidth to do that mm -hmm. emotional. Um, intellectual and um spiritual too so serving as an actor it it, it almost seems um counterintuitive or, or people don't think of the of the two necessarily it's so easy mm -hmm. to think that actors are doing what they're doing just because they're gra it's self-gratification mm -hmm. but at a certain point 
that's not the case because mm. as Jason will tell you, the hours that he's spending on station 19, the hours away from his family, the hours in the, the, the circumstances that are uncomfortable, not just the conversations that have to be had, but just, you know, logistical conversations. We, mm. we become like a, um, you know, part, part of a big, um, a big team and it is a team effort to do what we do. We cannot do what we do alone. That mm -hmm. old adage about, you know, he talked about an existential question, do I exist, right? It, and, and if you act, if nobody's receiving it, it, it is, can you claim that you're, that you're an actor? Mm -hmm. So we can't do this without at least an audience. Mm -hmm. And certainly uh, we work within teams. So we learn about what it means to, to cooperate and mm -hmm. I have learned about sexism, misogyny, racism, equal pay, parity, um, yeah. and all of those things happen in other businesses, but we have to talk about it. Yeah. We talk about it as characters and as, um, mm -hmm. as uh, professionals. So the, that's why I'm still here. Yeah, this is all, this is so, so great. Um, it reminds me, this is why the SAG Awards have an ensemble, uh, ensemble categories, right? Because acting is a collaborative, it's, it's reflective of that team spirit. But I'm so glad we're touching on this idea of the behind the camera conversations. Um, and of course, I want to get to that. I, know why, I definitely want to talk about the state of the industry and, and um, your work, particularly, you know, in the last year, it's been exactly a calendar year since everything's been shaken up. But um but first, let's talk basics of the SAG, found, SAG After Foundation. So what do you both do with SAG After Foundation? And like, if someone here is tuning in, maybe they are in the union or maybe they're not, um, and they don't know the basics, like what, what should they know? Well, Jason, because you serve not just the foundation, but the union, why, mm -hmm. maybe you're, you're a good person to begin that conversation. And then I'll, um, I'll dive deeper in some, un some foundation details. Good point. Sharon Lawrence is a brilliant woman. Um, that's a good idea. Um, here's the thing. I, SAG after the union exists to protect members. Mm. Uh, the labor movement exists to protect workers. Uh, but because it gets caught up in, uh, by necessity, corporate uh, economics, corporate finance and that sort of thing, it, it's not seen for obvious reasons, as a full nonprofit, 501c3. So the SAG after the union has the SAG after foundation, which is in fact a full 501c3 nonprofit organization that's, uh, that isn't tied up in the economics of the industry necessarily. It is, uh, and so it serves multiple functions and does multiple things, uh, some for the uh, members of sag after like helping them get better education in different skill sets. Uh, there's a voiceover lab that's state-of-the-art and amazing, and, you know, Don LaFontaine, the, uh, quote-unquote, the voice of God from uh, some of the greatest movie trailers you've ever seen in your life. Uh, his his uh, voiceover lab is state-of-the-art, and people go there to learn how to do that thing we call voiceover, which is an art form unto itself. And every time I think I'm a pretty decent actor, I go into the voiceover lab and I go, I have no idea what I'm doing mm. <laughs> because it gets so focused and nuanced and you learn more and other skill sets uh, that SAG After members need. So many different things. There's education for SAG After members, but it's also outside of uh, our membership. Uh, Storyline Online mm. is a, uh, you know, and Sharon knows this, it's, you know, is, uh, it's, it's the greatest performers in the world reading stories to kids to help them uh, learn to love reading, uh, to get them excited about reading. So that's one of the, that's become one of everybody's favorite things to do because it's, you know, it's just reading to kids. So, but it's also things like uh, emergency relief funds, uh, mm -hmm. disaster relief funds. Uh, so, you know, we have this great uh, video, if anybody's seen it, you can't forget it, uh, of Steve Carell talking about uh, a dear friend of his who, you know, they, they worked together, uh, met on a commercial, became good friends, and then had a catastrophic illness situation happen. Mm -hmm. And, uh, they, you know, did not have the funds to handle it all. And it was the sag after Foundation that came with the money to, to help uh, make things work. And, you know, fires in the Los Angeles fires and people lose their homes. 
So I got your foundation. Well, mm -hmm. there's there's relief funds there. Uh, COVID relief uh, in the course of the last year, insane amounts of money have gone mm -hmm. out the door to help people because, you know, for a good while there, nobody was shooting nothing. Uh, okay. And I can't remember a circumstance at, I mean, I, Darren, you tell me the last, I, I don't know that there's been a time where the entire industry, that one part of the industry might stop, you know, it's like, you know, it might be on hiatus from television, but commercials mm -hmm. are still shooting, films are still shooting. You know, there's nothing, it's never been where everything stopped at once. And that was the case. So people were hurting and the SAG After Foundation to the rescue uh, for so many people will get you some money to keep food and, you know, food on your table and keep that roof over your head. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, so it's mm -hmm. the, the SAG After Foundation is that uh is is, is does, does things like that uh for both our members but also for you know the you know for society in, at large you know mm -hmm. uh, because we've got you know the greatest performers teaching people how to you know it's fun to read absolutely it's uh 6.5 million dollars raised by the sag after a foundation to be that's been distributed wow to our members in need for of covid relief and we have uh, called upon and received great support from the leaders in our business. You, you, you know, the, the big name actors that you all know uh, gave money right away mm -hmm. for, for, for COVID relief. And they did so for the fires and they did so for the floods in Texas. And they do so all for, for any big catastrophic event that happens in the regions that our union represents our members. Um, and because we recognize that stewardship uh, is so important, it's been uh, a, a, a message that we've told um, through the SAG awards. Any SAG awards show that you see, you'll, you'll hear about the foundation because the money that's raised there also goes to these programs. Mm -hmm. Jason mentioned the, the story storyline online the beloved children's books that are read by beloved actors is a tool that educators and parents use around the world. Yeah. And I imagine now um, with uh, virtual learning that this program has been uh, something that people who are not actors uh, and who, and those who are have recognized that the skill in telling a story on a screen through a lens hmm. is is really valuable and does keep us connected and keep us engaged. I, I I don't know if 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 this audience is is primarily actors, but I just want to mention something that I found fascinating when I learned about the origins of our union in general. When before the union was formed, actors were not allowed to be buried in church cemeteries. Actors? We were yes, we were oh. persona non grata oh. and the actors the, the beginning of the act actors union was indeed a coalition of people who came together to raise funds to take care of their own wow. in such an elemental way now while that might sound morbid the truth is a lot has changed actors are now mm. certainly regarded well and um and there's a reason that there's a value for, for what we do. But there's also a great need because uh, actors sacrifice a lot to achieve that, that uh, high level of success. And certainly um, most of us that are middle class actors are working job to job. And when the pandemic shut everything down, uh, I think maybe the rest of the world that, was, that, that started to feel the tenuous nature of what it means to be a gig worker and yeah. we are gig workers yes yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we have we, we have this unfortunate distinction of I, I tell my friends everything that exists in every industry exists in our industry but on volume 12. so yeah. uh you know every most other businesses have the illusion of stability we just have no illusion there we know that our work our world is unstable we're working from job to job and that it can yeah. go away at the drop of a hat we've known that for a long time, uh, right. you know, that's that's what you sign up for. Most people think once you get that nine to five job that you're, you know, well, we're good, we're stable, and it's like, well, you're 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 one fall off a ladder, you're one, uh, you know, you're one illness, you know, so many things can happen that can make that job 
disappear very quickly. And we're just painfully aware of it all the time. So mm -hmm. true. And yeah, this and, and this isn't a pity party, but um, yeah. because we have great partners in serving these needs, we work with, you know, the the other unions with the Actors Fund. They we we raise the money, they distribute the money. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't want to say the Actors Fund doesn't raise any money, but we've raised the the SAG After Foundation has raised that money, and so it's important to recognize that we work as partnerships. We are not um, competing because we are all our goals is to serve. Um, this community of artists. Absolutely. Yeah, it's so it's such a good point um, that the past year has thrown into relief, like, as you say, Jason, like, artists by nature are pre prepared, I'm saying, quote, unquote, prepared for a situation like this, because it's the gig economy that they're used to. But on the other hand, they're also going to be hit hardest, the, art the artistic community is going to be hit hardest by situations like this. So this is why I think it's super important to check in with you guys this year, like especially like I guess a year in. Um, as we were as we were saying before we kind of kicked things off, things are changing. I mean, I guess things have been changing for the last year now. But what's what is the situation for you two looking ahead? Um, you two personally, but also like what is the what is the rest of 2021 looking like from from the union and the foundation's perspective? Um, is it true you're both filming? Also, side note. Yeah, I, Jason mentioned what he's doing. I'm also working for Jason's boss, Krista Vernoff, on uh -huh. the new show Rebel, starring cool. Katie Segal and Andy Garcia and John Corbett. And uh, I'm also a Grey's Anatomy alum. It's not a crossover show. It has nothing to do with but But it, uh -huh. it is wonderful to work for um, a team that it does tell truths. Uh, the rebels based on Aaron Brockovich's life, the, the advocate for um, class action suits. Cool. And, and we're telling the hard stories. And it's a um, what I am grateful for, not only that it films in Los Angeles, because a lot of things that I do don't film in Los Angeles. Mm. But it's been nice to, um, to be able to, to, to stay close to home while so I can get, you know, the my life together for when I do have to leave because we will have to leave and I think that's what 2021 will mean is that production is picking back up mm. um, our industry is uh, benefits from great testing whenever we go into work we're tested three times three times a week or uh, two days before any any time we step on the lot whether it's for mm. a costume fitting whether it's for work and uh, I know that our industry is being so safe that I feel very well protected. And I'm mm. grateful that studios have invested in that. And, and of course, it's no surprise that they have to. There are zones that we work in. Um, mm. the, if, if, you're, if you're building sets, if you're um, making deliveries, if you are uh, transportation uh, on a location, you're considered one zone. Jason, do you know what color that zone is considered? I think that's zone B and that's yellow, which is uh, okay. separate from zone A, which is where anybody who comes in contact with the actors. And so mm -hmm. I get yelled at all the time because I want to hang out and talk. And they say, um, there are people who can't come in to set to do right. their job until you get out. So get out of here. Yeah. yeah. So because uh, it, it, this will make sense when you hear it, we wear our masks and shields very, it's, there, it's, it, there are COVID compliance officers, mm -hmm. um, there are hand sanitizing stations, there are sanitized plastic bins that when it's time for us to, for the cameras are rolling, we rehearse in those um, PPE equipment. Uh -huh. um, we get our hair and makeup done in the trailers. There are uh, plastic shields that separate. There, there, there's a lot bigger spaces in between the stations for hair and makeup. Um, there are pods, if you will, of people. And mm. when, when they call it red zone, the actors have to take off all that PPE because uh, unless your show is talking about COVID, you are not wearing masks. So right. they, they talk about red zone and there it goes to, um, to, to that level of protection. And they we and, and the minute that, that the camera stops, we're putting that stuff right back on. Wow. Yeah, what, what, what's amazing is that it's, I mean, and, and, and again, all love in, in to SAG-AFTRA, the union, mm -hmm. uh, along with the DGA, IATSE, uh, and the producers. Mm -hmm. This is where 
you know, you, you, we talked about collaboration earlier. Like that, for me, that's the juice. That's yeah. that's yeah. the that's the thing that excites everybody is the collaboration, the exchanging of ideas. Well, we had this universal problem, and there was this great exchange of ideas, and together they developed a set of protocols that could work for everyone, uh, that made everyone feel safe. And there is no such thing as safe. There is safer and safe enough uh -huh. for people to feel comfortable going back to work. And it was understanding mm -hmm. that it's still there's still a risk, but you know, three times a week, I felt better going to set. You're getting tested three times a week. I felt better going to set than I did going to the grocery store, yeah. or going anywhere else. And it's costing producers upwards of you know three quarters of a million, a million dollars an episode. I'm sure. Uh, yeah. Because you know you're hiring tons of extra people just to be your COVID compliant officers, to be more PAs. So we're literally there were you know arrows saying which direction you can go on set. I mean Sharon ran down most of the the big ones, and it's a uh, it's impressive. And it, yeah. it just you know and it, it, and I, I, when we went back to work, I just felt blessed. To, because there were shows that decisions were made and didn't have the money or the money you know didn't see the you know the, the return on the investment for and there were shows who didn't come back largely because of COVID that were supposed yeah. to have come back and so um it's been a hard year you know for, in in that regard I mean it's been a hard year for everyone but I'm just talking about from a purely professional standpoint it uh, it it threw wrinkles in that uh wreck the industry in a lot of ways and i think but think i think things have come out of it that will be beneficial like totally for example i think that uh self-tape auditions were happening a lot of the time anyway mm -hmm. and a self-tape you know back in the day we used to have to climb fences and sneak on the lots in order to get seen by <laughs> casting directors and, and yes stuff, right you know come on i'm old enough to say i was in there uh, sneaking in with friends who had the audition and you know, oh, if, you've got, if you've got good friends who don't see it as a competition, sure. If it's your role, it's your role. And if it's it, so, they'll say, "Hey, just come with me, and we'll, you know, and you know, audition." But now, you know, people click on links for cats playing with yarn, so clicking on a link is not a difficult thing to do for a casting director. So, mm -hmm. the influx of self tapes into the industry has democratized it a lot more. A lot mm -hmm. more people will actually get a shot at seeing it at, at an audition than before, which is a good thing. And because we all know, you know, booking the role is fantastic, but second to that is getting the casting director and the producers that see that tape to realize you're a good actor, you're a yeah. good performer. You're, I'm not gonna give you this role, but I need to find something for you someday. Mm -hmm. I wanna work with that person someday. And having that out there, that said, you know, it, I, I still like being, you know, we, I've been done been doing table reads on Zoom and while that's incredibly convenient in a lot of ways, you know, tech problems notwithstanding, mm -hmm. I like being around my writers. I like getting to know them a little bit. Those conversations, there is a lot to be said for the water cooler conversation that they find out that you know how to juggle because that's a random thing you did while while standing at the crafty table. And they go, oh, we're going to work that into the show one day. <laughs> cool. You know, uh, th these are things that are true stories. Um, you know, and so those I, 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 we, we need to find the balance, but I think that that the ability to virtually and digitally connect with each other is an element that that shouldn't go away, and that we needed to have implemented more in the business. But um, we're now at a place where I want to go back to the balance. I actually, I, I need to hug some people. I'm not yeah. allowed to hug people. So no killing, fraternizing on set. Yeah. People. And and totally. the SAG After Foundation has done that COVID relief as well. This $6.5 million that we were talking about has gone to 7,000 SAG after members and their families. Yeah. Wow. It's a lot of people. Yeah. And we, we hope that people know that they, they're, they, they still are eligible to apply for okay. this relief. It's there. And yeah. uh, we want you to, to recognize that we, we know, we know, we know the need and we will continue to serve it. A hundred percent. But I also want to speak at just because uh, we were talking about, you know, who the audience is for this podcast. You know, people who are performers, are actors or love right. acting and performing. Um, if you're a member of sag after you can donate. If you're not a member of sag after you can go, you can donate. Great. <laughs> and so, yes. so when you pay your dues as a sag after member, there's a little little box that you can, you, ah. you know, there are 150,000 uh, sag after members. If Everyone skipped a cup of coffee and <laughs> threw that three fifty five dollars mm -hmm. at the uh, at, at the at the SAG after foundation. That's you know th twice a year. That's a, that's a million. That's a well over a million dollars. 
And that makes a massive difference. And you can, and we, we get letters from people all the time who talk about the difference it made in their lives. Uh, and what's fun, what's really gratifying is when you get a, a testimonial, for lack of a better word, from mm. performers you know, performers you've been watching, performers that you are a fan of, mm. and you find out that at some point in their career that, you know, things weren't clicking the way that they wanted them to in the way they mm. are right now. And it was a sag Outer Foundation that helped them stay in the game so that they could actually eventually hit that hit their stride and become the comedians, the actors, the mm. singers they are uh, today that we love, know and love. Mm -hmm. And we have such an incredible staff at the sag After Foundation that not only put on the programs, which if you haven't seen our library just on YouTube, mm. it isn't just actors talking about acting. It's, it's directors, it's casting directors. One of the, my favorites that you'd have to search for is editors talking about what they see in an actor's mm. performance and how they, how mm. they are the second eyes right after a director and maybe even more informed eyes because mm. They're watching it without any of the filter of what was going on in the moment as it was being captured and how they love actors, yeah. um, and the people that are helping you learn how to upgrade your equipment for technical stuff. All that stuff is, is, is available to actors. It's free. And actors can give back either, of course, by going on the website today and, and give a donation. Mm -hmm. and, and anybody can go on sagafterafoundation.org backslash donation. But you can also decide to take some of your residual checks that are below a certain dollar amount, say $10. I mean, we know we get those that are four cents, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And you can go on the website and, and scroll down to your residual payments. And you can check a box that says anything below this amount, just send it right to the SAG After Foundation. I know that. Okay. And that's, that's, that's a click of a button. It's accessible on your, on your website. And you have no idea how, how much that adds up because sure. small donations like that really mean a lot to this community, especially now. That's such a great point. I didn't know, I didn't know how easy it was. This is exactly, I think, what, you, what union actors listening to this should know. That it's that easy to donate. And I didn't know there was a residual check option. That's, that's, yeah. that's amazing. And, of and course you set the level, up. right? You set mm -hmm. your level of, of the threshold you know, below which amount that I, love that I don't know about you, but sometimes if I'm, if I'm like opening up those checks, cause I've done it now, but I'm opening up and going, I'm spending more gas trying to <laughs> deposit this thing than I ever. Yeah. Well, remember that, uh, there, wasn't there a place, what was the, there was a bar or a restaurant where like, if you, you know, if you came in with a residual check less than a dollar, you, you could get a free drink. You could yeah, get it. It was called out. residuals and it, it was in Burbank. Oh I don't know if they God. survived anymore, but <laughs> that's amazing. But you put it all together and yeah. you you can serve yeah. a need that is great. Oh, I want to thank all the actors and directors and casting directors that serve us by coming to do these panels. And they're doing it virtually now. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it we have a great facility in L.A. Uh, uh, on Wilshire Boulevard with the SAG-AFTRA mm -hmm. union offices, SAG-AFTRA Foundation and our staff and our great communication staff that put this together, that, that help all uh, and, and what we do in New York with um, the Robin Williams beautiful yeah. theater where sure. so much good work is is being done. It's a screening room, but it's also held for classes and and lectures. And there's such an educational component to, to what we do because we never we never stop learning. You know, as my yeah. dear friend and acting teacher um, and former waitress, we we met waiting tables. And Jason, I still have that skill. So let me tell you, <laughs> um, if uh, I. I <laughs> I don't know if I'm as good at it as it used to be, but Lisa, one of her, one of her uh, takeaways for me is, uh, and, and, and themes is I am just beginning. And I think that's true with actors all the time. Mm. We are just beginning constantly. And that's why when you're asking for support and when an organization like the foundation can give support, mm. it's because we know that we are, we are always starting over Absolutely. as actors. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It really does. It speaks to this moment in our in in the industry and in the world in general. Like this industry that we're talking about, this this community that we're talking about, is so creative and innovative and resilient. And I think one of the takeaways here is all of the good stuff because there are there are benefits that have that have arisen in the last year in the face of all these challenges. 
that will continue, at least I hope. That's what, that's what I'm thinking we'll looking forward in 2021. And I the think stuff so. that wasn't really working, we can leave behind. <laughs> <laughs> 100%. I mean, one, one, I mean, talking about all the programs that, you know, performers exist not just in Los Angeles and New York. And mm -hmm. the, uh, all of our actors that in, in, you know, very, you know, in other countries, in, you know, in Toronto and Vancouver and in Atlanta and in New Orleans uh, and in, te you know, in Texas, every state has got, you know, local, has, has some performing community in it are more aware now of their ability to access all of these mm. archived educational things that the union has for them, that sag After Foundation has archived and waiting for them. And so it's not, you don't have to be in, the, you know, everybody who's <laughs> got a computer or a phone in the last year has become painfully aware of how to navigate these things and realize that there's benefit to it. So you, you, you gain access to information that you previously you weren't aware of. And now you realize yeah. it's there and waiting for you at sagafterfoundation.org. It really does. It, we are also at an like one of those potential benefits is the democratization, like you said, Jason, about uh, certainly self tapes that's been democratized. But yeah, there's this sense of um, regional is no longer regional. That any actor working yeah. anywhere, especially if you're participating in Zoom theater or in Zoom auditions or table reads or um, having to become your own lighting and sound person to pr to produce whatever production you're working on. Yeah. More ring lights have been sold in the last year. <laughs> the ring light industry, exactly. Yeah. Oh my gosh, this is all so great. And I think I, everything on my list to like mention for SAG, SAG After Foundation stuff, emergency assistance, catastrophic health fund. Um, I know there are also scholarships for mm -hmm. college students and union families. And of course we mentioned uh, conversations, the business panels and the casting, um, casting access workshops. These have all been turned totally virtual, right? These have all been going strong. Um, I know I've tuned into several conversations. I do miss being able to do those at, the, at, at Wilshire Boulevard and at the Robin Williams Center. But again, it's another example of like, it works over Zoom. You still get to ab absorb that inspiration and wisdom over Zoom. Exactly. And we can't wait to get back in person. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, I mean, yeah. I, virtually every actor I know wants a live audience when they can get one. Um, I know. Yeah. But, um, but at the end of the day, though, we'll have the best of both worlds. When we can get back in the Robin Williams, when we can get back uh, yeah. at the foundation, the ability to have an audience and zoom it so that all of our members in regional, you know, then uh, th that's the best of all worlds. And we're going to get there. And, and, and same with the, the casting situation. I mean, self tapes are fantastic, but I like Zoom auditions. There's a balance because one, okay. my, one of my issues with a self tape is I don't have the ability to give them a sense of who I am as a person. Yeah. And I don't get a chance to find out who they are as people and make a personal connection with that casting director or that mm -hmm. producer. Uh, because at the end of the day, part, you know, the deciding factor when they've got, you know, multiple talented actors who've all got a great take on the role is who do I want to spend 15 hours a day with for Absolutely. the next you know, six months. Uh, and so that, that, that X factor, I think you can get some of that in a Zoom. Yeah. You can get some of that in a Zoom. But I also still like getting in the room. I still, you know, at the, exactly. I think we're all kind of ready to get out of our house a little bit. That's what I think okay. is one. Of the, I think we're not. I think it's all going to stay. Self tapes and Zoom auditions are going to stay. The, mm -hmm. It's all going to keep, you know, be archived and accessible digitally. But we want to have the choice. We want the choice to get back into rooms again. I think that's what I'm looking forward to in 2021. Later on, is yeah. for these vaccines to get put out through the world and for uh, for us all to have the choice to do it. You know, you know what? I don't feel like getting in my car today. I'm going to lay up in my pajamas and and I'm going to watch that conversations. I'm going to watch that business panel uh, that. on my computer or, you know, what? I'm throwing on my suit and I'm going to roll in and I'm going to see if I can't, you know, uh, you know, catch that major producer's eye. Right. I love that. And it takes tools to do that. And I want to thank Backstage for being one of the earliest tools in, in my career back in oh New York, gosh. right when I graduated from college and and with no prospects went to New York. I had some friends that I'd done summer stock with. And they were the first one to show me a backstage newspaper mm -hmm. and, and to see it on the newsstands and know that, that it was a treasure trove of, of potential uh. of how to, how to feel like there was a map to a place that needed what I was able to offer or needed to offer me what, mm. I, what I needed to learn. Mm. 
And it's always been that way. Uh, Backstage has continues to to really be um, a connector of the community. And um, thank you you all for helping us get the word out. Oh my gosh! Thank you for saying that. The foundational piece of I mean of infrastructure that I don't know I can't imagine the industry without backstage. That's like that's the first. I think it's, I feel like it's the first step for every actor. Like Sharon was saying, Sharon, you know, every actor has their story, and it usually starts with backstage early on mm-hmm. in the game, where you start to get a sense of how this thing works. This thing called Hollywood works. Wonderful. Oh my God, you guys, that was on my list, and Sharon, you segued so beautifully into that. Thank you for the, the pure gold um, propaganda that we will absolutely repackage oh, and it's, use it's somewhere. Not, <laughs> it, it, it's not propaganda. It, it is. It for me. It, imagine trying to do trying to do this without that, without that resource, without Absolutely. knowing where. Oh, this is this is the name of the people that produce this beautiful show. Or here's an audition for a non. You know, I say this as a union member, but I wasn't always a union member. Sure. And backstage yeah. allowed me to see both things, mm-hmm. so I could tell what I what was available for me right now, what I could aspire to, yeah. and um, where to take classes and mm-hmm. just getting to hear Cheetah Rivera tell her story about yeah. what it was like for her in the beginning. And, mm-hmm. you know, it's all that is there. And I know that it's there digitally now. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know it takes a lot of work to, to create that. So thank you for knowing that, that your passion and, and the, the publication's passion does not go unnoticed and is oh. still very necessary. Thank you so much for saying that. Um, and going off of that, we ask this of everyone on this podcast, of course, but is that, what is the, what is the advice? What is the number one piece of advice for those early career actors you're talking about? Have people asked you, do you get asked this of early career actors? Is there something you always kind of, kind of go toward? I'll, I'll say what I, what I say a lot because it still is true. And I have to tell myself this, you must be willing to, or, or comfortable with change. An actor's life okay. is, everybody's dealing with change now, but a- actors have to pick up and go on a dime. Yeah. So recognize that your own internal world, if it, it, change has to be something that you can come to terms with. When the good mm-hmm. stuff happens, when the hard stuff happens. Um, and that's something to continue to embrace. And, and, and if you find that you're really resistant to it, then ask yourself whether acting is what you really want to do. Maybe you want mm. to tell stories in other forms, which is all of them are important and necessary and needed. But as actors, we, we have to be able to deal with, with yeah. change, Wonderful. big changes. Yeah. I tend to tell people, uh, I go right to the unsexiest piece of the whole thing. I say, uh, I say, everybody else is going to talk to you about the creative aspects and the craft aspects. And I will go on ad, ad nauseum for hours about that. But <laughs> get your money right. Get okay. your money right. If you find that day job that uh, gives you, and keep looking for the day job that gives you, that pays your bills and gives you the flexibility to sneak out for an audition, gives you the flexibility to sneak out for a day shoot, gives you the flexibility to get out for a guest star. And if you set that up right, then that's, um, and that's self-sustaining, mm. then theoretically you never have to quit acting mm. uh, because the acting is not, the acting is the bonus money as it were. Uh, sure. I, think, I, I think that uh, journeyman performers I know, journeyman actors look for ways to set up that self-sustaining economic situation. I know so many actors who scraped and saved so they could buy a rental property. So, or when they, or when they bought a house, they said, I'll rent out my back house. That pays most of my mortgage. Find some way to get your money right. You know, yeah. and the reality is because your choices, they call it FU money. And it is what you think it is. <laughs> FU money doesn't mean you have a lot of money. FU money means your money from this job is not what defines me. And it's not going to make or break me and not going to allow me to live. So mm. if that's self-sustaining, then you don't have to take that job that you're not really feeling. Uh, and just right. even the sensation of having choice frees you. Is empowering, yeah. The, so, the sensation of having mm. freedom of choice is going to make you more relaxed in the work. Yeah. It's going to give you the freedom to sail creatively right. and to take the risks that are necessary to find excellence. 
And then that's when I started to get into the creative piece of, mm -hmm. you know, saying that's when you want to be, you know, in, in, you know the, the most powerful time you have in your life is when money's no object because you're crazy stinking rich and when money's no object because you have nothing. And so whatever, We're, you know, I'm already scrambling. Let's go nuts. It's that in between stage yeah. that we get nervous. Um, mm -hmm. And the idea is to get yourself, get those finances squared away on their own so that you can be free and uh, have all the arrogance of the artist that you want when you get in front of a camera or when you yes. get up onto that stage. Yeah. That's such a good point. Of course, it, this all, everything, everything you're both saying affects the craft. I love that we got philosophical advice and practical advice and all of that is going to inform you as, as like a purely as a creative artist. This is spot on. You guys are <laughs> awesome. Um, we asked this of everyone and I'm very curious to know what is one performance you think every actor should see and why film, TV, it could be theater as well. And some actors really struggle with this question because there are so many. So maybe if it's something you've seen recently that inspired you. <laughs> mm, that's hard. Well, okay, so while he's thinking, I'll say what first came to mind and I'm not sure why it yeah. did, but Jenna Rollins okay. um, in, um, Oh God, the one where she's the alcoholic. Oh, uh, in Women Under the Influence. Women Under the Influence. Thank you. Lovely. And um, current, I think Reza Ahmed in Sound of Silence. I mean, Sound of yeah, metal. Sound of Metal. Sound, Sound of, metal. of Metal. Amazing. It, it, it is is amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Re Reza Ahmed in Sound of Metal is amazing. And then I'll, I'll go back in a similar. Um, Morgan Freeman in Shawshank Redemption. Okay. Mm. Mm. Uh, for a uh, simplicity, mm -hmm. a filled life uh, is is amazing. Uh, wow, performances. Um, Denzel in Training Day. <laughs> uh, uh, yes, because he you know uh, just cut the thoroughbred loose and let it go, and let him go nuts. Uh, uh, I know. And he shoot you know. There's no. I always say there's no such thing as too big. There's only unfilled. Uh, oh, in terms wow. of performances, people say it's too big. And I'm like, no, it just means you weren't, you didn't fill it. Um, because he is huge and he is gargantuan in that movie. And he chews every last bit of scenery and we mm. love him for it. Mm. And he's, that character yeah. has a personality like that. And so just, just when you see performances like the simplicity of Riz Ahmed and Sound of Metal or you know, Morgan Freeman and Shawshank Redemption, that's one end of it where it's just be, but I know there's so much depth there and I want to crawl inside your head and see what's going on inside mm. there because it's a real person sitting in front of me. And then how big uh, and powerful, mm. and it's not pushed, it just is. Mm. Uh, there's a person here who's a, he's a world beater uh, in Denzel's performance in Training Day. That's so great. Those are such good choices. Um, and then I have to let you both go, but um, the SAG Awards are coming up. And you're, I'm, I know neither of you are involved directly in the show itself. Uh, actually, actually, I am. Correct me if I'm wrong, you are, okay. I, I'm on so the what can you tell us about the show? The show, uh, yeah, I mean, like, well, first off, again, all love to the, the SAG After Foundation because the, all the money raised from the SAG Awards goes to, you know, mm -hmm. the, the, the profits go to the SAG After Foundation, uh, which is one of the reasons why the SAG Awards came into existence in the first place. Yeah. This year, again, definition of turning problems into opportunities, it's going to feel really, really intimate. Uh, they, okay. I think, you know, everybody practices their accept, their awards acceptance speech in the mirror, but I, I felt like over the last few years, people have started practicing their, I am an actor speech because the, one of the, it's every, every actor loves it when they watch the SAG awards and you oh. see, you feel uh, validated when you can see that, you know, that the Francis McDormans of the world, the Allison Janney's, you know, mm -hmm. weighted tables, uh, wore a silly costume mm -hmm. on the side of the street. Uh, or whatever, you know, that they you know, did birthday, that everybody had started from someplace and they didn't just start at that awards thing. So we're taking the I am an actor speech and this entire bag awards is going to kind of be that on steroids. Uh, oh, cool. And, and that taken up to another level. So it's, uh, and you get into people's spaces on their sets and their homes. And so it's going to be, uh, I think it's going to be, uh, I think people are going to really love it. I think it's going to be, you know, cool. like I said, it was, we were like, we have to do a show in COVID. Um, how do you do an award show in COVID? And then it became the realization of, wait a second, we get to do stuff we've never done before. Mm -hmm. And we may not really have the ability to do again. Yeah. Uh, but this is going to be pretty, pretty special. Awesome. I didn't know we were going to get a sneak preview. This is great. 
Yeah, yeah it's going to be a beautiful year. I mean, the, I mean, look, the, the thing I love is the fact that SAG after is, you know, there's like 130,000 different members who could vote uh, mm-hmm. on the nominations. Yeah. Oh no, it's like 2,500, 3,000, I think something around there that actually on the nominating committee, mm-hmm. but then 130,000 that vote on who the winner is. And I have absolutely no idea who the winner is, but every year I'm, I go around telling people, I, I say, here's the deal because we are such a large sampling of America and any, any race, gender, ethnicity, you name the kind of person that exists in the world. And we have to have somebody who can play that. So we are yeah. the diversity of our world mm. in this membership. So the movies that get nominated usually represent the most popular movies of the year, the most diverse movies of the year, as well as because we're all actors, the best performances of the year. Yeah. Yeah. And so it ends up being just as cornucopia riches. And I, 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 I called Parasite when nobody else was checking for it. I said, I think, <laughs> I said, I know Parasite's going to get nominated. I said, and I think it's going to win. Wow. I told a couple, I was like, it I said, because it's, it's it, by getting specific, you get universal. This very specific Korean conversation about class. There's nobody on the planet who doesn't get that, yeah. who, who, is it look so it would so this year's going to be interesting it's going to be a lot of fun and it's also um sag after is one of the biggest if not the big it's certainly the biggest entertainment guild in terms of membership is that right yeah in the world 130,000 yeah that it's, it's the biggest yeah that's like 150,000 members or so okay wow yeah and they're um I do feel like that must mean that some of them are not aware of the resources that are available and so I hope that I hope that people listen to this podcast, but I also, I, I hope that um, the sag After Foundation's resources are, are more widely known. And um, thank you both for highlighting how those in the union can help give back and get help if they need it. Well, thank you, because as we were talking about before, they might not know uh, about mm-hmm. all the jewels in the sag After Foundation archives, but they probably know backstage. Um, yeah, so interesting. <laughs> thank you for helping us get the word out. Of course. Mm -hmm. Maybe we can do this again in a year and we will be talking about like an entirely new and improved, you know, entertainment landscape where everyone is even more supported. And okay. Well, so meet you back here right before the SAG Awards. uh, I would actually love that. In 2022. 2022. Sharon and I will come and do the Mutt and Jeff show. We'll explain to everybody about the SAG After Foundation again. It'll be great. (laughs) Yes, we will. And and maybe maybe the SAG Awards will be in person next year. That would be nice too. God willing. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Well, well I am I'm so excited for this year's, for this intimate, vir- intimate virtual version. This sounds great. Well, thank, thank you, you both. again. Thank you so much, Jen. And now it's time to hear from Christine McKenna Torella, our backstage casting insider. I will let her take it away. Hi, guys. Christine McKenna Torelli here. What an amazing interview. I honestly didn't know this much about the foundation and what they're up to, so I loved it. SAC After is almost 200,000 people strong, and I'm such a dinosaur that I remember when SAC and AFTRA merged, and it was this huge deal back in 2012, so it's great to see that it's so successful. I thought today we could go through the options about how you can join the union. I know it's on a lot of actors' bucket lists if you're not already part of the union. There are many roads to joining, so here are the most common. The first one is, of course, get hired on a union gig. Don't shoot the messenger. I I know that sounds so simplistic. But you'll either get hired as a principal actor, and in this case, the casting team will fill in the paperwork, and you'll be required to join the union after the job. But I want to highlight as well that you can also join if you complete three days of work as a background actor under a SAG after collective bargaining agreement. So something to check about working background on a union project is that some background positions are considered union and others are not. So just make sure you understand what you've signed on for and if you'll get a voucher that will add to those three jobs that you need to join the union. Secondly, I've seen a lot of actors doing it this way these days. They are joining the union by creating their own legitimate creative project with a SAG after agreement and writing a role for themselves. I'm always advocating for actors to take control of their careers. So you know that I love this and you know that I think that this is the future. 
It's a lot of work and you'll need a team of like-minded creatives that want to work as hard as you, but I think it's the future of content. And honestly, the way sag After has pivoted and innovated their contracts to reflect the market we work in tells me that they feel the same way. Finally, you'll be eligible to join if you're a member of a sister union like Equity, Actra, Agma or Agva. You have to be a member for more than a year in good standing. There's a few more little fine print things to look at, but if you're a member of one of those unions, SAG After wants you to join them too. Here are a few things to keep in mind about the union. So the initiation fee is currently $3,000, so you're going to have to budget that in. And there is also a semi annual fee to consider. Secondly, non-union members can apply and be considered for union jobs, right? So always apply. Even if you're non-union, you might be right for the position. You might be perfect. That's how you get that first option of, of being picked by casting to join the union. Thirdly, once you've joined the union, global rule number one is you cannot work on non-union projects anymore. You have to stay union, right? You can't break the line. And finally, I just want to highlight that being part of a union doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to work more. So consider whether it's the right time for you in your career before joining. I'm going to unpack that a little more in a few weeks because it's a very common question that I get from actors. So we'll discuss the pros and cons of joining unions in general, not just sag after. As always, we have amazing articles on Backstage about this. So I've pulled this info today from an article called What Non-Union Members Need to Know About sag After." On to the casting calls for this week. So uh, the theme is sag After, so I've picked out three union jobs for you guys to think about. A Netflix film called The Good Nurse is filming in New York and seeking various featured background for the project filming in April and May. The Gilded Age on HBO is filming again. They have another casting call up with us, which is exciting, in New York, seeking various featured background for the project filming April and May also. And my Los Angeles actors, if you are SAG AFTRA, they're looking for improv actors for a returning network variety series, looking for quick thinking men and women, 18 to 65, all ethnicities, who are great at character roles. Details for all of those are on the site. And as always, we have hundreds of casting calls for every type of actor in every region on the site. So head over to Backstage.com to check those out. That's all from me for now. Break a leg in your upcoming auditions and have a beautiful week. In the Envelope is recorded at Lotus Productions and Hyperbolic Audio in New York City and Soundbox LA, Mark Rouse Studios and Buzzies in Los Angeles. Thanks as always to our producer extraordinaire, Jamie Muffet, and to the team at Backstage, Samantha Sherlock, Mark Stinson, Caitlin Watkins, and of course, Casey Howe. Visit Backstage.com, and don't forget, you can subscribe to Backstage by using the code ENVELOPE at checkout for a free trial. That's right, 100% free. For more exclusive content, join us on Facebook and Twitter at In The Envelope, and subscribe, share, and leave a comment. Would you like us to interview next? Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time for another glimpse in the envelope.